Uh, so let's see what questions the committee has, George. So thanks for that. It's, it's um, you know, looks like really useful tools. The question I have is around um, the gray literature. So, um, you know, it looks like the tools are, are very good at, at pulling in from PubMed and, and, and the like. I'm just wondering about tools for uh, gray literature and also about um, tools for not just natural language processing, but chemical structure search kinds of things. So like the way that actor is, is organized. Well, in, in terms of the uh, gray literature, so <laughs> this is from the, the user perspective, so I'll probably butcher the language. If you can stuff it into an EndNote file, you can import it. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so in that sense, it doesn't have to come from PubMed or, or wherever. And we've sort of tested the ability, the priority ranking, um, not necessarily on the gray literature, but it's because it's built on this bag of word model, I think it conceptually should apply. But we did find that that its performance was fine when you, when you went outside the PubMed mesh approach. Um, on the second, I think that, you know, we're trying to really focus, I think, on sort of, uh, you know, how we describe sort of the findings from this traditional evidence and really trying to partner with the, the talent in NCCT when you think about sort of the, the chemical structure. So right now we're not doing much, but sort of <laughs> trying to take advantage of the work that they're doing in that area. So uh, one, one question, uh, foreign language literature, one of our public commenters addressed the need to sort of scan the whole literature. I mean, there are possibly relevant publications that are not out in English, so are you able to handle that? What we try to do is, one, we try not to exclude them. And so th during the screening process, um, sometimes you might find maybe the, the title and the abstracts in English, and if it looks like it's relevant, we collect it. We recognize that we may have to sort of translate it, but we collect it, so we don't screen them out. There are cases where you know maybe the title will be in English and the abstract's not, and you might make decisions about whether the title seems like it's directly relevant, and if it, the title doesn't look like it's directly relevant, then it might get screened out. But we try to we try to keep them in, and I think that the feasibility of looking at them is sort of you know facilitated by a lot of sort of the the language um, translation programs out there. Uh, just a random suggestion. I don't, I don't know if you're aware of, uh, there's work in DARPA that Paul Cohen supervised, which is doing machine learning on huge corpuses of articles and trying to identify mechanisms in biomedical. Are you aware of that at all, you guys? I don't think so. Okay, I don't think I'll, so. I'll, I'll send him your way. He's yeah. Not, he's not yeah. a dean of information yeah, in and computing at a University of Pittsburgh. That, that would be good. And one of the things I mentioned in terms of this innovation challenge is because this is not just a problem for us, right? I mean, this is a problem that sort of plagues the field, is that um, you know, we're tr deliberately trying to sort of uh, develop these test sets and then share them with the field because I think it'll, many people will benefit. But it's, it's a large field when you sort of find out pockets of people who are doing what. Anyone else on the committee? Committee fatigue? <laughs> Could be. Okay, well, thank you uh, very much. And we'll look forward to the demonstrations. I think that will be uh, also helpful in understanding what these tools can uh, 